Today on In the Woodyard, we're measuring stuff. We're gonna measure logs. What do you think of that? Whoops. Whoa! Is got, that like you? Kind of limp. Very limp. <laughs> so today I'm at Tony's once again. Here he is, the man, the myth, the legend. And today we're gonna talk about measuring devices for saws because there's something new that a lot of people don't know about. So we're gonna talk about it. So show them what you got here on the table. Looks you like know, you have toys again. Before we go on, <laughs> I gotta let you know one thing. I'm a little butthurt. I, I gotta let you know. I watched your video. I mean, all last year, I was your best friend for most of the year. Then you go up to New Mexico and you meet this guy, Jeremy, whoever that is. Do you have any, and, oh, wait, 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 do you wait, have wait. any elk on your property? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. But I don't wanna show them to you. But anyways, now all of a sudden, I'm your next best friend. So all I can say is, you know, I felt like used toilet paper when I heard that. Well, you know? look at him, folks. Well, you know, <laughs> but I'm telling you, Jeremy, you watch it. He's going to find someone else, and we're both going to be used. Now I know how those girls feel in high school. Get jilted. Yeah. Did Anyways, you, I got that off my chest. Do you cry chest. yourself to sleep at you night? Know, I do. <laughs> I absolutely do. Oh, well, that's funny. So, no, we're going to go over here. Yes, we have a multitude... You've seen this on other channels. You've seen this many, many different times. Well, we just wanted to cover it. And the new technology that's coming out, or it is out now, we're going to be showing you as well. Naturally, the first chalk and a tape measure. Great mm -hmm. stuff. We all started with it. Whether it's using a tape measure at 16 inches or using a predetermined amount on a stick and marking it, it's great but you get wet wood, this doesn't work at all. Right. So, you know, you look at something like that. Then you go to the new versions of the expandable, you know, up to 20 some inches, I think, or I can't even remember, I, can't, I don't have my glasses on, so I don't mm -hmm. know, but I think yep. it's like 20 some inches. This is great. A That's new one. magnetic and it goes on the bar. Exactly. So let's just show them so some people might not know. Well, here, we got a bar right here. Oh, well, look at that. Well, here, just oh, stick it here. on there. Now, that's one. Now here's the difference. I was using this for about two years, mm -hmm. but what I found is the magnet constantly kept rolling and right. kept hitting here. So I'll, me, cheap, I went to the hardware store and got another magnet, super mm -hmm. glued it on there, still does the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and I purchased this because I wanted to, I got a, a a load of logs from mm -hmm. from uh, John, mm -hmm. and I wanted consistency. Mm -hmm. So I got this, this magnet, once Six you put it down, right, yeah. it does not move. And that's the Accu, right? This is the Accu Mark. Ugh, that's heavy. Okay. Really like that too. Uh, and then you have your old tried and true, putting 16 inches on the bar here. Yep. But what you end up having to do is constantly turn it, turn it I did sideways. That for a long time. And we see yep. you doing it occasionally, yeah. yeah. Yep. And then you have the Chris patented <laughs> invention here of the whiskers, yeah. which is right there. Yep, so, 16 inches. So yeah. it's 16 from there to there. Yep. I had lots of videos on it. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch them. There's well, three or four Well, not only that, uh, I don't use that. My peripheral vision is as, as good as yours. And I watch you when you're pretty consistent on what you do. But, you know, for me, it's like I, I have a hard time. So Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm not as precise as people think. I want, it, I want it in a range, 15 to 17 inches. I've never had anybody complain that the wood was too short. They usually complain that it's too long, that it won't fit in their mm -hmm. furnace or it sticks out. So I just want to make sure I don't have anything past 17. I want to keep them you know, 15 to 17, right in there, just because that seems to work. And, and it all turns to ashes anyway. Mm -hmm. That is true. <laughs> the other one that have pretty much many people have is the Mingo marker. Right. Works fantastic, mm -hmm. but you have to have somewhat straight logs. Mm -hmm. If you have tree service wood, it's tough. Mm -hmm. But absolutely, the, the type of wood that you get, yes, it is. But like you point, it is another, another step um, right. And then it shoots a dot that's about one inch. Mm -hmm. So as I we were talking about, you can be a little bit, you know, one inch. Are you cutting on the right side of the dot, mm -hmm. the left side of the dot, or in the center? And you know, to, for consistency purposes. Yeah, if you've got time and you want to enjoy yourself <clears throat> out in the woods, it's it's an extra step. 
I'm all about speed as fast as possible. I don't want an extra step, which is why I quit using the bar method because I was turning right. and then cutting and then turning and then cutting, which, which works. And, and you did it for a long time. A long yeah. time. And then I, I saw, well, the reason I came up with this is I saw Andrew at Easton made. With his, on the Husqvarna. On the Husqvarna, though. and that's an actual. It is a Husqvarna part number, part that you can but buy. But try to find it. Yeah, they're hard, they're hard to find. And I thought, well, I, I got to come up with something. So I came up with this and it works. But I got to admit, when you're in the woods, and you're in brush, this does get in the way. And if you're carrying your saw, this is always hitting you. They don't last forever, they do break off, but it is pretty quick to just look down and, and see. So you can see here, I got my yep, bar you marked got your... right there. So I, I actually... don't care with, which method we're using, they have their drawbacks. Right, right. So it's whatever you're comfortable with. Prior to getting the new technology that I got, I probably will say this was one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is this sticks in the right. 3 8 slot uh, sure. of the kerf. Right. And I can put it up to the, to the side and my wood is consistent. So now, you also use this quite often. I do. On a smaller saw. You, yes. You put yeah. it on well, your what I top. do is the top handle mm -hmm. one and that is slicker than Greased all cat done. poop on linoleum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Yeah, but this thing right here, you usually just snap it on that top saw, and it's just really quick. But again, it's an extra step. It is an extra step. You got to carry this with you, right. possible of breaking it because it's carbon fiber. Well, and and it should be a bright color because I I I was cutting once with another guy, and he had one of these, and it fell off. We couldn't find That's it. That's it. It took us a while to find it. And. In my cutting, or I wear jeans with mm -hmm. the with the paint or with the uh, chaps. With no, <laughs> <laughs> my depends come off, you know. Oh, okay. But anyways, you have your pocket right here, so mm -hmm. that's right. right. But, but it's still, I've like you said, you go through brush, it pulls right out. Yeah. So you're right. It is one step. But the new technology. Let's get all. Let's get, get rid of all this stuff here. Throw all this off. We're gonna go to the new stuff. So what Tony has here is what? The Pro Sizer. Technology comes to firewood. Yes. So show me how it works. What do you have? Well, here, we'll do some unboxing here shortly, but here's the unit already mounted. And that's on your 500? Yes, this is. Because you put it on your favorite saw. Exactly. And you end up using just this saw most of the time. <laughs> that's the key. You hit it right on the head. I had looked at measuring devices and I got the AccuMark um, at the same time that I got a load of logs from uh, John. Mm -hmm. So I had the 14 cords and I wanted to have consistency on them. So I got the AccuMark and I went ahead and I heard about this and I called and ordered one. So we have this and this is the ProSizer. The owner, Bob, very nice guy. Got to talk with him. He explained why he came up with this and everything. But in very high um, sunny weather and everything, or that's the number one question is, does it work in the sun? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, we're going to take you through the good, bad, and the ugly. We're going to give you a, a, an honest review on this. And I've gone through, as I said, 14 cords cutting with this. Four cords. Or, or 14 cords because I did the whole truckload. Right, a whole truckload, yeah. 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 So that's a lot of cutting. So that's that's, that's a, a lot test. of cutting. So it did get the the things that I don't know how it will work in winter time if it's in your in your truck and it gets cold. So we're gonna have we're gonna be testing it out. This is my six six month kind of review. Mm -hmm. So we'll go through that. We'll do an unboxing uh, as to what you get with the with the unit. So it mounts on with this aluminum bracket. Yep. Yeah, yep, this is an aluminum and it's well construction, uh, well machined, let's say. And you'll see it here in pieces. This, uh, the owner, Bob, was telling me he had gone through many iterations of this laser right here because he wanted the, the most powerful laser that he could get and have it last a long time. The battery life on this is about five hours. And you think about it, that's not much. Well, if you think, how many, how, if you're cutting for five hours, mm -hmm. I don't know too many people that do that. Right. So. Just crazy people. Uh, well, else. yeah. <laughs> Name Chris. <laughs> well, there's a few others. 
But yeah, yeah which, and, and the first thing everybody's going to want to know, how much? It's less than a million, you know. <laughs> it's $59. Yeah. So when you look at the AccuMark, it's like 30, just under 40 bucks, 35 ish or right. something good like thing, that. Obviously, that's not going to fall off. Once no. it's on, it's on. It, it is, yeah. And when you're cutting, when you're on trigger, you pretty much just leave it on. If you turn the saw off, then you turn it off. Yeah, right? that's yeah. exactly it. If I'm refueling or I need to move a log or whatever, I'm shutting my saw off anyways, and it's just one additional step. Right. Well, show me on the wall here how all this works then. Okay. What I did for demonstration purposes is I put some tape down here. You don't have to be this elaborate. You can just get a tape measure, put it on a log, or just put it on the tip of your bar. And it, I did it for 16 inches. You can do whatever you want. This might be something that people say is too cumbersome, is when you go to change this to 14 inches or 18 inches, you have to loosen this up and move it over. Well, There's two is, screws. All you do is turn it though, right? Yes, that's yeah. all you do. Yeah, that's that's no all. Big deal. That, that's all you do. But, you know, I keep mine at 16 and I don't change it at all. Mm -hmm. So, and what I do is I know that the, the tip of my bar is right on the edge. And then once I turn this on, the if lasers. I go down. Yep. So you're right, right, at, right at 16 inches. At so basically, inches. You're on, so you go on either end of the wood mm -hmm. and you've got. On right. your left-hand side, you've mm -hmm. always got the dot. So whether you start on the right-hand side, work to the left, or if you start on the left, the nice work to your thing right, is, you just line this up on the on the left end and, and work your way. And that's the so, big thing. A lot of people aren't showing this on right. uh, when they review. You can work left to right or right to left. So and it that's a huge advantage over what is. I do. Because yeah. with my feelers, it's way easier to start on the left and go yeah. to the right because and your feelers on the end all the time. This one's the same way. You yeah. do better left okay. to right, but you can do right to left easy enough because if you have, just like you do, you pick a spot over there, maybe it's a dot or right. a, a moss mark, or yeah. something, yep. whatever it is. But all you do is you bring it to the end of the log, you look where it is, and then just start cutting. And obviously you gotta be careful that you're not running your saw when you're bringing it down so that you don't have the tip of the bar hitting because that Actually, can happen. Actually, it does, <laughs> and I might be different, I do have the bar running slightly, or the uh, chain running slightly when I come down and get in. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, it's not full blast, you know, I'm right. not doing it. And when we demonstrate it, we'll show that. Sure. We'll shut that off. How are you going, here on? All right, now we're going to go ahead and do the unboxing. I see you have a Fiskars. Oh, it <laughs> happens to be a Fiskars. <laughs> Is there anything they don't make? Underwear. <laughs> no, no Fisker's underwear, that's good. Well, as you would say, your thong. <laughs> thong. They don't make thongs. <laughs> Here's what you get with it. There's his card. How do you like that packaging? Nice, this little burlap sack of potatoes in there. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I'm guessing that was a woman's touch because that's it, too yep. cool. A man wouldn't think of that. Well, maybe, maybe. Oh, nice. There we go. Look at the quality on that machining. Yeah, it's a nice little piece. Yeah. And, of course, everybody's going to ask, is it made in America? Um, I think the, uh, the die or this part is machined. Anything electronic has to come from overseas. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's okay. And, and in full disclosure, I did pay for this, for my first mm -hmm. one. But when I contacted him, he had, um, Bob had contacted you as well on yep. the um, on getting one of these. And I happened to be talking with him, told him that we occasionally work together. So he sent me another one for you to try, which mm -hmm. is this one. So yep. we're gonna put it on my saw. Exactly. So it so comes. You got, you got your cord. Yeah, you get the charging, get a little charging wrench. cord. You get the Allen wrench. And this is a very common um, yes, connector. A very a seen, common USB. A lot, of my, a lot of my stuff has the same cord. Yep. Um, my Rode mics, my GoPro chargers, all the same. Now, all you've got three of the stainless steel screws here mm -hmm. and two extras that come oh, with it. Okay. And then you get this rubber piece, depending on the thickness of your bar or sure. your handle, I didn't inside. need to put 
on mine, yeah, you can stick that inside and it will take up the space. I would the imagine difference. there's probably some consumer type saws that are smaller. Exactly. Let me grab my, here's my box that I got and I'm just looking. What I do is I used from one of my phone chargers, mm -hmm. I just use the end of it here mm -hmm. and I just plug it in at the end of the day. Right, you gotta make sure you're disciplined That's to it. do that. That's it, and it charges within an hour, hour and a half, it charges up. So no problems. I, I have run four, I think four consecutive tanks of gas on this with the light on and it, it did not run out of. Uh, that's a lot of cutting. Yeah, that's a lot of cutting. That's time. And if it charges in a half an hour, it's lunchtime anyway. Well, Take that's true. In. Or in your case, you carry one of the small chargers, which you could plug exactly. that in. Exactly, exactly. I have and a little, I have a couple little battery packs I use for exactly. my camera equipment for charging batteries, so I always have that. I mean, everybody should have those anyway, because mm -hmm. it's just a good backup for your phone or anything, so Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. The one thing I will caution everyone on when you get one of these, or if you get one of these, is it comes with this little rubber piece right here to cover up that hole. Well, unfortunately, mine got lost almost immediately. So what you can say, Chris was talking about this, is putting a, just a piece of tape on that. To cover the hole. To cover the hole. Yeah, because you don't want sawdust getting in the USB um, yeah. plug there, whatever the name now, of that. Uh, I will is. admit, I will admit that, that I've used it without this plug for the last, ever since I've had it. And not had a problem. And not had a problem. Yeah. So... But, and it's on the back side of it, so it's not like it's getting a lot of dust right. anyway. Well, the still saws don't cut very good anyway, so that's probably why. Angled cut, <laughs> you know, like you said, <laughs> angled kidding. cut. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. <laughs> What's gonna happen? Here we go. We're gonna mount it. All right, so it's out of the box. The first thing you do is you loosen up those screws. Right, what we did first is we loosened this screw and we took out the, the laser itself. Mm -hmm. Now it does need to be charged before you can use it, though it comes with a slight charge from the factory. Um, in cold weather, you might have lost that charge. So all we're gonna do is loosen this up. So one of the things we were just talking about on Tony's saw, he has it mounted down lower here. And when I noticed when I was cutting a tree, what was that last fall when yeah. we were doing that? Right where you want to grab the saw, it was a little too low. So we're going to mount mine so I can still get my hand on this side of the handle here. We're going to mount it up above. So I still have my corner grab and I have my bottom grab because it goes right there. And that was an issue when I was cutting, I noticed. Yep. That I wanted to grab right there, but I could I like could only get two fingers on it and it was kind of in the way. But, but let's be honest, you do have a lot of issues. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> so we're going to put that. Now, first thing I noticed right off the bat is I don't, yeah, maybe we will be able to lock this up without having to use that Spacer. rubber grommet. So we're gonna, I bet that's a standard size um, tubing that could be. all manufacturers use. But I, I know Gordon from, or Gordy from GP Outdoors, mm -hmm. he has an MS-261 steel, and he had to use The spacer. This. The yeah. rubber spacer. He had to use the rubber spacer. I had spacer. to do that with my uh, tractor knob, my spinning knob for my tractor. Mm -hmm. I had to use the spacer for that too. Yep. So we're just going to tighten these up slightly just so we can get some tension on them and then we're going to move them around as necessary. That's pretty tight already. So I'm just going to use this I think as a been partially on the corner. That's why. So you want your button on the outside like this? Yes. Yep. Not on the top. Not on the side. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, it doesn't matter. No, no, no. Else. You want it on the top? I actually put it on the side here so it doesn't Got like it. that. So it's actually on top then. Yeah. So it's on top. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I just got to confirm. Mine, I think now I did mine like this, so it's. Do you reach think, in? Yeah, I think you can mount it. 
Well, anyway. I was wondering as far as bumping it, do you bump it? And no, bump it? I, I, I think found, on top makes more yeah, sense. Yeah, it does. It does. So mine is on the inside. I thought maybe brush would get it right, or whatever. Right. That's why I'm so, thinking on the outside might not be good, but you got this right against mm -hmm. it here. So exactly. It, you know, there are instructions, but we're not going to read those. Uh, well, you taught me that. <laughs> Why do we want to read instructions? Well, you learn more by trying to figure it out, and if you really can't figure it out, then go to the instructions. Yes. That's what I generally do. I know most people don't read them. Well, just like you were putting your uh, that uh, device for taking the wood out of your truck. Oh, yeah, the, the piece of crap bed roller. Yeah, the bed roller, that's it. Yeah. yeah, and what I know I got rolled on that whole deal, I did, but for 50 bucks. Yep. <laughs> I think I'm going to give that away to some visitor to the woodyard someday. Oh, instead of a piece of gum? Yes, I think I'm going to give that away someday. All right. So I can already see that that's, let me just put my hand on there once. I just want to see. Yeah, I better go up just a little. Cause I wanna, if I got gloves on, yeah, right, right there. Okay. Right there. Right there? Yep, right there is All where right. I want it. Then I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'll just keep my hand there. Just don't pinch me. And fragile. You just get snug enough so you can twirl it, right? Yeah. You know what? I'm just noticing. I think we did this backwards. This has got to yeah, go on the inside. Yeah, it's got to go on the inside. <laughs> I knew something was wrong Polish? when I'm looking at Are this. Are you Polish? I am, 100%. See the flag? <laughs> It would work I, like that. It would, but I'm looking at this going, yeah. this looks wrong. There you go. Now you guys know, don't do what we do. Exactly. Yeah, While well, you just spin it around, that's no biggie. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so now. And then this goes like this. There we go. That's the way it goes. Now you can tighten this up, but then this right. we tighten up. Well, we can tighten this up anytime. Okay. But now. I see the just, I see the instructions. It does show it going on a Husqvarna saw, so this is well, yeah, this is appropriate. <laughs> he just did that for <laughs> camera purposes, you know. You're the orange. The, I'm not in a hole. Okay, there. there you got it. Okay, now let's tighten this up and give it a little. We'll tighten that up a little bit more, so we're right there. So now we're aiming at the tape, right? And then you're gonna turn on. Let's and see then I'm gonna turn this on. It's way up over here. Well, I had this table down lower, but now if you take a look at that line straight down there, we're right there. Okay, that now so be. here's here's an issue. Though. See how much higher I am here. Mm -hmm. Do we want to lower that down? So I am aiming. Well, down that's lower? how. I did mine lower because of that. Yeah, I see. Now that. I, I don't know, and naturally you can't go any lower than where your tank is. Right, you got to be because able to you got to be able to fill your tank. Right. So and this thing doesn't. You can't torque it down. No, no. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to have to lower it down a little bit. Yep. I remember playing with this going up and down and I knew there was something. Yeah, you can go lower because I still get my hand in there. That's much better. Already. Okay, when I'm looking at this, we're pretty close yeah, right I there. So right if there. you- I can still get my glove in there. There you go. And that way we're much closer. Because I can see that would be an issue that it's not in line. It's, it's actually what? Two, three inches, two inches higher than the, where the, the tip of the bar hits over here. Yeah, so now we're right there, straight line. Now, you can now I can tighten this up. And then when we go outside, we'll do a cut, some cuts and actually measure to make sure everything is... Exactly. We may have to move it just a smidge. Or a titch. Or a titch, either one. Now that's not or moving, so that's good yeah. right there. And make sure that's tight, because yep. I, I throw my saws usually. Yes, you do. <laughs> Because they won't break like the white ones. <laughs> and cut sideways. <laughs> and cut sideways. Hey, I sharpened a saw the other day, oh, well, a couple of days ago now, and I must not have been paying attention. One side was sharper than the other, and it cut crooked. <laughs> I thought, oh, it still cuts. <laughs> and no matter what you do. It happens, yeah. 
All right. It was an I old think... old chain, so I mean, it one side. Oh, is was that just, the excuse you're going to use? Yeah, it was. Well, one side that the two teeth were down, just the nubs, and the other side there was plenty of teeth yet. I'm pretty sure that's why it was. That's my excuse. Well, do you want to start this saw to make sure it starts? Because some of these don't work very well. So now that we put a quality piece of equipment technology on. Yeah, let's go do, let's do some cutting. Okay, so Tony and I, I should say Tony, put on the Pro Sizer onto mm -hmm. my saw. And I've never used it before, so it's my first time cutting with it. And uh, we got a log here, so should I make it small? I think that would be a good thing, sir. Okay, I want to put some gloves on. So this is my first test. Okay, of, I want to we'll see how, see how it, close we get. Yeah. Well, what I'm wondering with big heavy gloves on, how it fits my hands ah, gotcha. on, the, on the horizontal. So, oh yeah, no problem, I get right in there. It's, it's probably a little lower than normal. I'm kind of grabbing down in here, but I can fit my hand even with the glove in just fine in there for cutting horizontally. Yep, that'll work. And up here, I'm just fine. But Chris, yeah. I'm going to tell you, we're not cutting horizontal. I know, but I do sometimes. I just wanted to make sure. So there we go. So it does work. So that'll work. So I'm going to start this baby up, but I'm going to put on my, my goodies put here. Put some PPE on? Well, I just like to be able to hear. And I did warm the saw up yep. for those of all that are wondering. Okay, so. I touch it here, that's or it. here. That's it. Now you see that? That's your dot. This is from cutting um, right to left. Yep. So I see the dot, I come over, yep. that's the spot. Like right this. So now if I was cutting from right to left, plus how it's got Now it. if you're cutting the opposite way. Right, right, right. Got it. You go to the end of the log. So right here, I can see it. Now if you guys will be able to see that. The dot on the log there. Want you point to it in case they can't see it. Yep. There's the dot. There's the dot. Yeah, it's like you go along the edge, it's right there. Yeah, okay. So you got your tape measure? I yeah, I brought one. I got one too. My tape measure is right here. Look at that. 16 inches. Yep. You gotta go on, yep. love it. You're not on it yet. Right there. there you go, 16 inches. Right on. Right on the nuts.
See, Chris, I told you I picked this log out specifically <laughs> so that I knew you'd cut them yeah, equally. Now, for those of you that are gonna ask me, how come my saw is bogging down when I was cutting? That's because I was pretty aggressive on my rakers. Ah. <laughs> and I could tell I couldn't really force it. I had to let the saw do the work. A couple times I actually had to lift it up a bit because the rakers are, I mean, it's a brand new um, chain I put on like two days ago. And it's my first sharpening. And I, you can see if Tony, if you look, you can see I took the rakers down. Oh yeah. And it's, it's very They're aggressive. They're shiny. It's very aggressive. A little, well, little too once, much maybe. <laughs> once again, if you let the saw do the work, which it's supposed to, it I, did it. I'm used to doing a little bit of work, but I had to kind of hold it back a little. Cause I mean, it was, it wanted to just, you saw it, it was eating, it, it cuts. There you go. There's the laser marker. Let's see if I can aim it at the camera here. Oh, there, oh, oh, it's in the lens right there. So there it is, it's working. And uh, I like it. Well, I'm gonna you gotta get it. used to it. That's I'm the thing. gonna use it for a while and, and get used to it. And then I'll maybe go back and forth between my old method and the new method with the, uh, the Pro Sizer. And uh, we'll find out. So I'll do a review after I use it a while again. But it, it seems to work pretty cool. So I kind of like it. Well, I'll tell you what, this is on big wood. Wait until you get into the six Smaller or stuff. eight inch. It seems to be much easier because oh. Um, the way the bar the is in, in comparison to the dot, I mean, right. I can buzz through a six inch piece. It seems a little bit easier, but doing these logs, as you see, you don't have to get, um, a measuring device or right. anything. Everything's right. right with you. Right. And this is about a 24, 25 inch log. Cause I was just barely getting That's through it. it. Yep. So it's a pretty good size one. But yeah, I bet smaller ones will be easier because your aiming point's gonna be more precise. Correct. Whereas on a big one, you got all that, that space there, but yeah. yeah. We're looking at 23, 23 and a half. Yeah, I know it, was, it had to be because I knew my bar was pretty much right at the, at the maximum there. But yeah, saw cut great. Let's go cut some wood. Let's do that. That's it for today, folks. That's all there is, there is no more. No more? We're done with the Pro Sizer. So I'm gonna give it a try and I'll give you a review after a while. And that is it for today. So you know what to do. Poke some buttons, hit them all. Hit the like, subscribe, share, all that. Tomorrow, I want to be back in the wood yard. You should come back. It'll be fun. Good night, Irene.